Okay, we have six more commands to work on in the modify section. Go ahead and introduce those to you. We have the trim and extend selections, and let me show you how those work. When you have intersecting lines, you can use the command trim to get rid of the portions that overlap. So I'll go back to copy and copy a couple of our objects over here and move the two to intersect. So let's trim. Select trim. We can select one or both objects. So let's just select the one to start. After you select your objects, hit enter. Now we can select either this side or this side to eliminate and hit enter. Now if we were to do that again, trim, and this time select this object and this object and hit enter, have an opportunity to get rid of portions of the object and not an entire side of it. So that might be advantageous for you at some point in time. Let's hit enter and complete that command. Now extend is the other opposite of trim and that will extend a line in the direction of another object. So let's say we'd like to extend these lines to this one. Make our rectangle complete again. So we select the objects that we'd like to use for extend and hit enter. And then hover your cursor over the side that you'd like to extend. We can do one or we can do both and hit enter to complete the command. Now let's say we'd like to extend to another object. Let's try again, extend and select our exterior rectangle and hit enter. And we can extend these lines, even these lines, in that direction as long as they would automatically intersect with the other rectangle. Hit enter to complete the command. We have um, fillet and chamfer. Those are two that I use pretty often and not always for the same reason that everyone else does, but fillet is going to make um, two lines connect and they can connect at a right angle or with an arc. So let's say we wanna connect them with an arc. We select the fillet command. At the bottom of the screen, select radius. And we can give the um, arc that we'll be connecting the two lines with a radius. And let's say that's six or six inches and hit enter. Select the first line and the second line. If you hit enter, you can repeat that command. You can adjust the size of the radius as long as it's not larger than um, the intersection of the two objects as a um, degrees. Now sometimes I use the fillet command just to complete without doing trim and extend. So let's try it a different way. Fillet and instead of a six inch radius we'll have a zero radius. So that will allow this line to connect to that line at a right angle. You can hit enter to repeat any command and we have our rectangle back. Chamfer gives us a right angle between two objects, and though I use it rarely, I'll go ahead and show you what to do. You can um, choose to create an angle between two objects or a distance between two objects, and let's try it with an angle. So it's saying the length on the first line. So I'd like to go one foot into this line and then chamfer the angle from the first line and we'll try 
30 degrees. So we'll select first line and second line. And there we go. We have a 30 degree angle between those two lines. You can experiment with that a lot of different ways and create beveled edges around your object. The next command is array. Array is very helpful when we are doing multiple um, a layout of multiple objects in a direction. So we'll copy this object and this object up here and we'll practice our arrays. So array is going to um, give you multiples of the same object in a certain direction. So we have a rectangular array. Select our primary object to begin with. It's going to copy this object and hit enter to complete the command. Get a new screen up on the top of our ribbon bar and this is going to allow us to select the quantity of columns and rows that we would like to have. So we have these columns and rows and we can allow a different distance between those. So you can go, let's say we're going to do six. And six. So that's actually going to overlap those objects quite a bit because its number is smaller than the distance we're going. Let's go back and do 10 feet and 10 feet and hit enter and that would give us a really um, quick stepping stone paving area. When you've completed and you're happy with what you have you can click close array. The other type that we use often is a polar array. So I'll start by drawing a line. Let's try a polyline around this circle. So let's do an arc, maybe another arc. Hit enter. Now let's use the array command. Polar array. To select the object that we want to be copied. Hit enter. Now we need to have a base point. Again, we can use our object snaps to select the center of the circle. Now it automatically duplicates a certain number of times, but perhaps we would like more items than that, maybe to fill the circle. So let's try 18. That gives us a lot more. If we want them to overlap, we can go more like 24 and see if the lines make a little more sense visually. These are opportunities to create um, designs in a circular pattern. I'll go back and try 20 and I'm happy with everything that's there. You can also select to not fill your entire circle. So let's say we only want to do 270. That will put our objects, 20 objects, in a 270 degree angle. Back to our full circle and hit close array. Moving on, erase. Very, very helpful and important. So if you need to erase an object, you can click erase select the object and hit enter and it goes away. You can also do it by selecting the object, typing erase and hit enter. You can select the object and hit delete on your keyboard. So a few ways to get rid of your objects at one time. So we've created several objects that are um, linked together Let's try a polyline.
and close will complete this item. Moving it over to explode an object would mean to take it from being one grouped item into multiple lines and arcs. So clicking explode will make these items independent and they can be moved independently and edited independently, which can be very helpful. Our final command is one I do use quite often, and that's offset. So if we want to create a second item, either inside or outside of the existing one, click the command offset, and it looks like a little thumbs up. And the offset distance here is three feet. We'll just stick with that and hit enter. Now we select an object to offset one and out. So select. Now if you go in, you can't because that is smaller than the actual object. Let's try it again. So we'd like to do six for six inches. Now select the object and click to the outside of the object. So select, click outside, and you'll get another rectangle, exactly six inches in every direction from the original. Click again, move to the inside, and click, and again, it's all perfect spacing for you to work with. There's a few more commands for you to learn in AutoCAD. Go ahead and practice those, and then we'll do the assignment.